My name is Logan Aldrich. I'm here to sh on my blog to show you baked macaroni with Parmesan. What are your ingredients? Here are my ingredients and my tools and, um, and then my measuring spoons and this big pan, which you can't see. So here we go. Here we go. This, this is the first step in making it. We're grating Parmer, Parmer John. In this case, we're doing Gouda. And we're grating one ounce of it. And... Any tips for kids to be careful on these graters? Any, and, tip, and a tip for kids to be careful on these graters, they are very sharp. So watch your fingers. So watch your fingers. All right, step two. Get four tablespoons of butter. I put in four tablespoons of butter. I did a little extra because it won't, and with things like butter, it won't always get all of it. And now we're gonna put it on a gentle heat, but don't let it, oh, but don't let it overheat or brown. Because if it if it will it will, t it will will affect the flavor and the color of the sauce. So step three: get a half a cup of all-purpose flour, and then once your butter has melted, once your butter has melted, put it into the melted butter and cook it for one minute, stirring constantly with a wooden spoon. Here's the butter, it should be like this when you're, it's time to put in, add in the flour. So, here I am doing step three, putting in the half a, half a scoop of, but, of flour. Here I am putting it right here, in here, and then I'm, Stirring it constantly for one minute. Today's special tip. If you don't have whole milk, which the recipe says, and you only have 2% or any other kind, you and you have half and half, half and half and this together is basically whole milk. So now that we have the whole milk, or the mixture I showed you, we put it into the roux on the stove still and then stir it in until it is basically like a thick soup soup and if it spills no biggie it's it still will work just fine and this is the consistency you would like it like thick like this pasty we're putting it back on low heat, and then the same mixture I showed you um, of cup and a half of a cup and a of a half whole milk into the roux and, and starts and stir, and then start stirring. You remember what this kind of sauce is going to be called? Is it bechamel? It's going to be called a bechamel when it's finished. So now we swap out our wooden spoon for a whisk. One like this would be the best because it can scrape the bottom and then start stirring up with the whisk. Quick, quick tip for kid chefs. If you want to make a good meal, you have to taste your ingredients. One. Oh, and once your sauce gets thick, Keep on stirring, don't get tired, even if it's hard to stir. And it seems like magic because it gets so thick after, after it's basically water thickness. See? See that? It's like paste. Quick tip for today. You don't always have to follow the cookbook. Like this one, for example, doesn't even have salt and pepper. We're put, adding in Oregano, onion powder, garlic powder, herbs, provolones, and garlic paste.
that up with your hands. I'm Logan Aldrich again. If you have a garden, you should always pick some fresh herbs. Follow me this way. So I'm going to get some rosemary and some sage for this dish. Hi. We have three big raised beds that has tons of stuff like Brussels sprouts and rosemary and arugula and so on. We're growing a lot of stuff. As you can see, our tomatoes are doing really well. And, and if you want to make something with your dish, like a salad, you could, if you have lettuce or something you can make it out of, you should get some lettuce from your garden instead. Plus this is on the boil. Rosemary tip, if instead of peeling all the leaves, you see where they all stick up like this, go down to your brown part, pinch your hands like this, and just pull them down and they strip right off. So, a quick tip for cutting rosemary, you roll, you stack it up on top of each other, roll it up like a burrito, and take a knife and cut it like that. Or also called a chiffonade in French. One of these is very handy to have in a kitchen for all sorts of jobs, cleaning the table and cleaning the cutting boards, it's called a pastry knife. In this case, I'm using it to scoop up herbs and putting it into our bechamel for both of them, sage and herbs, rosemary in this case. Quick tip, if, if you want to have a nice cheesy crust, you should get your butter, you should butter the pan that you're baking it in and you should probably like squeeze it up and do it around like this and get the sides. And if you have kids who like to eat butter, they can lick your they can lick their fingers after. Grab a growing up for this part. We're putting in the noodles into a strainer. Like this. Just like that. Why do you need a grown up? Because the water is boiling hot. That's right. Now we're adding the cheese to the bechamel sauce. Let's keep doing what we do. Our brother! Hey, another quick tip. If you, if you want to see if your whole family would like it, give people like your sister a taste. So, now we're going to add half of the bechamel sauce with the cheese added into the pasta and save the rest and the other half for the top. And here I am stirring up half of the bechamel sauce with the noodles. We're going off recipe a little bit because we think that a little parmer, I mean um, provolone would go well with this. Here I am putting in the 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 dish into the baking pan from the, the from the bowl. I'm making sure we get all the cheese and stuff out of it for the baking part. And the other thing we're going off the recipe is they don't call for anything in the book to make a cheesy top, and the picture shows a cheesy top. So we're gonna put on some cheese for the top. Like this, let's sprinkle it around so it cover, lightly covers the whole top. And here I am putting the, the thing into the oven at 400 degrees. There we go, done. So, since this dish that we're making is not the healthiest dish of all, we are going to make a salad to go with it. Since the stems of the arugula are the pepperiest, pepperiest of all, we're just going to rip off the leaves and get rid of the stems. Go. Since the arugula is so peppery, we're going to grate some zucchini on our grater 
into some bits so it's not as peppery. Now we're making our own dressing. So first we're using one of these lemon squeezers to squeeze in some lemon for the sauce. And then we're doing a handful of dill into here. Some salt. Three big pinches of salt into the sauce. And then um, some of a tablespoon of sour cream. And then some olive oil. And then some less yellow mustard. There we go. And then we just whisk, whisk them together. Quick tip. Always add some capers with not much of the sauce they're cooked in. So, if you're mixing it up and you're done, always taste test to make sure it tastes how you want it to. If it doesn't taste how you want it, add some ingredients in. Like in this case, we need some extra salt. But you could do extra salt, dill, or pepper, or or anything else. You can use your a big knife as a pusher to push it into your bowl. It will act just like the pastry knife I showed you early earlier. You know, when, like when you're cooking, the smell goes all through the house. So. People might smell it from next door or if they're walking by and might want to see what it is. Go check out the so don't be surprised if some people come knocking on their door. If you think you have extra dressing, you shouldn't you shouldn't put all of it in. You should put it in portions like what I'm doing right now. Here I am now tossing the dressing. And you should do this if it looks like you have a good amount of dress of dressing. You might want to stick with it, or you should give it a taste, or you could give it a taste to see if it tastes how you want it to. If you like these crunchy brown parts, you should scrape them down in off the sides into the dish. It's done. It's it's done. This is what it will probably look like if you follow the recipe.